Good morning. Thank you for joining me, Pastor Zach Williams of Flat Creek Baptist Church here in Gainesville, Georgia, for another edition of New Horizons, the daily podcast and radio ministry of Flat Creek Baptist Church. It is always my greatest joy to be able to dive deep into God's Word with you, and I pray that these daily podcasts are a blessing to you and your family. If you would like more information about Flat Creek Baptist Church, please go to our website, flatcreekchurch.net. Friends, we are in the book of Acts, and what a joy it is to be walking through the Acts of the Apostles. This is, uh, to me, friends, you, you talk about a book of power, and indeed it is. You remember that Jesus said in the book of Acts, chapter number one, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You know, friends, if you go all the way to Revelation chapter number three, Jesus speaking to the church at Philadelphia, he says, behold, I've placed an open door before you. And friends, if there's anything we find in the book of Acts, it's a church filled with power that recognized the open door. Uh, there was they, they looked at every situation as a gospel situation. And friends, if I could urge you today, to understand and remember the power and the authority of the Holy Spirit of God in you and to see the open door that he's placed before you. Remember that Revelation 3 in the church at Philadelphia, Jesus says there's an open door before you that no man can close. Jesus has opened the door and because he's opened the door, you and I, we need only step through that door and the Bible says that no one can close it. When we look at the story in Acts chapter 3, friends, it's the story of an open door. It's the story of two men filled with the power of the Holy Spirit of God going to a place where there are multitudes of people who are coming to, 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 to assemble and to pray. It's a story of two guys who walked into a cultural context that they understood amongst people they knew in order to take an opportunity to tell them about Jesus. Friends, I suppose that Peter and John were a bit of a strange sight inside of the walls of the temple complex. You see, the temple complex is filled with religiosity. It's filled with those who have phylacteries on their foreheads, wearing long robes and long prayer shawls. It's filled with, with people who are trying to feel the commands and who are working and trying to fulfill righteousness in their own self. They're tying prayer things around their arms and they're, they're saying the prayers and they're doing these things multiple times a day trying to satisfy God in heaven with their works. And then here come Peter and John into the temple complex. And friends, I believe that Peter and John must have seemed like a, a bunch of aliens to them. If you remember that first Peter chapter number two, Peter actually says we are strangers and aliens on this planet. Friend, I believe that Peter and John must have seemed like aliens. They looked different. They walked different. They talked different. They acted different. They were different than everybody else. They weren't concerned with working themselves to God because they realized that Christ had done all the work on their behalf. They were resting in his finished work. So they walk into the temple complex. There's the man He's lame from birth. He's asking for money. Peter and John, we talked about this yesterday. They looked intently at the man. They've locked eyes with him. And what does Peter say? He turns around. And the Bible says very specifically that this guy, he was expecting to get something from Peter and John. And the Bible says that Peter says to him, I do not have silver and gold, but what I have, I give to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, get up and walk. And then taking him by the right hand, he raised him up and at once his feet and his ankles became strong. So he jumped up he stood and he started to walk and he entered the temple complex with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. Peter and John, they look at the man and they say, we don't have silver and gold. We have no earthly treasure that we can give you. 
However, what we give you today is of greater value than anything the world has to offer you, sir. You see, it was our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that once said, What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world, yet loses his soul? Peter and John say to this man, We don't have anything that this world has to offer. But sir, what we do have is something even more unbelievable. You see, you came out here today searching for change. You're thinking of the worldly. But what we want to do is tune you in to the supernatural. What we want to do is tune you in to what God can do in your life. And so Peter and John, they look down at him and they say, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene. Don't you love how they call him out by name? Jesus Christ, the Nazarene. Friends, can I tell you today, this is the name that makes heaven rejoice and makes hell shudder in fear. Jesus Christ, the Nazarene. They don't make any mistake about it. They say exactly whose name they're calling on. They're calling on the resurrection Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, you get up and you walk. Friends, they had seen Jesus at other points in his ministry heal people from crippled hands, heal people from palsy. They knew that there was power in Jesus, and they knew the Lord Jesus Christ had indwelt them with the Holy Spirit of God, and they knew that Jesus had promised them, you will do even greater works than these unto the gospel. And so Peter and John, they tell this man to get up and walk. They speak it in faith, and the man gets up and he begins to walk around and not just walk around, but the Bible says he begins to leap. He begins to strut. He begins to praise God for what has happened in his life. Now, friends, we'll find here in just a moment that this man had actually been born and had been sitting there for 38 years. This is a man who was already fully grown. Imagine for just a moment how this man must have felt. And friends, I'll tell you when the Lord Lord Jesus Christ moves in, you can't help but be excited about it. I can remember a little fella down in the uh, church I used to pastor down in South Carolina. I can remember the Lord Jesus Christ saved him, saved his mama, saved his sisters. And I can remember this little fella, he, he didn't know any better. He had never been much of a church going boy. And he came to church one Sunday after he had been saved. He sat up on the front row right next to me. And when the uh, when the music minister began to sing victory in Jesus, that little boy, he got to strutting. And the next thing I know, he was doing a jitterbug across the whole entire sanctuary. Now, there was somebody who was sitting behind me who told me to make the little boy stop. Now, friends, I'm telling you, we don't need to make people stop when they're praising Jesus. This man was on fire for Jesus. He had been healed by the mighty name of Jesus, and he was going to praise him for what he had done. Now, friends, listen to me today. You need to go back in your life, and you need to think about the moment the Lord Jesus saved you, and you need to ask yourself this question. Are you still praising? Are you still jumping? Are you still leaping? Are you still strutting? Are you still about the Lord Jesus Christ today, the same day, same way you were the day you got saved? Are you still excited? Are you still telling people? Are you still filled with the passion and the zeal for what God has done in your life through the Lord Jesus Christ? This man, I suppose that if you had saw him 30 years later, he would have still been jumping. He would have still been shouting. He would have still been praising. Why? Because he could say the Lord Jesus Christ made me whole. And friends, that's the message of the gospel. The gospel is the good news that Jesus Christ can forgive you, set you free, and make you whole. May God bless you as you go on your day and you ponder on these things and you remember how God blessed this man and the great work that Jesus wants to do in your life. And may God bless you as you go on your day. We love you and we'll see you next time on New Horizons.